uh, dear speaker, dear professors, dear participants, welcome to the webinar. Mm -hmm. Our president, Professor uh, Professor Khan Orhan, is uh, not with us this evening because he is in uh, Dubai for the <clears throat> excuse me for the preparations of the um, a congress which will be held in Egypt. Um, after this short note, uh, let me tell you about the. Um, subject of the uh, this evening's webinar. Uh, as the field of dentistry continues to evolve, more advanced imaging, uh, imaging technologies and tools are developed to address specific clinical tasks that are not typically addressed by conventional combined CT and two-dimensional radiography. Uh, so this presentation uh, we'll delve into three emerging technologies that have the potential to revolutionize dentomaxillofacial radiology and dentistry. Um, and these uh, new technologies, uh, which will be covered in this uh, webinar, will be presented by the uh, distinguished speaker, Dr. Noel Saif. Uh, Dr. Nara Saif uh, is an associate professor of uh, oral and maxillofacial radiology at the Faculty of Dentistry, Cairo University. She holds a Master of Science in Dental Medi Medicine, Diagnostic Science, and Periodontology, as well as a PhD degree in oral and maxillofacial radiology, both obtained from Cairo University. With over 20 years of experience in oral and maxillofacial radiology, Dr. Saif has designed and directed numerous uh, oral and maxillofacial radiology uh, programs. She serves as a member of the research committee of the International Association of Dental and Maxillofacial Radiology and is a member of the research team of the ITU who focus group on uh, artificial intelligence for health. Driven by her commitment to advancing knowledge in her field, she founded the Egyptian Maxillofacial Radiology Alliance in 2022. And Dr. Saif lectures nationally uh, and internationally, sharing her expertise and collaborating with fellow experts in the discipline. And this evening, we have the uh, chance uh, to listen to her and uh, <clears throat> she will present um, the latest advances in dental imaging. Um, now I'm leaving the floor to um, Dr. Nora Say. Welcome again. Thank you so much for this uh, kind introduction and invitation. I would like to thank the Turkish Society for Dental and Maxillofacial Radiology for extending this invitation to me. Uh, I've had the pleasure of visiting Turkey several times, both for leisure and for scientific events, and I have nothing but wonderful memories and um, wonderful people and acquaintances that I had the honor of meeting during my visits. So uh, I'm really happy to be with you today. And let's begin with exploring the latest advances in dental imaging and the three emerging technologies that I will be talking about. So um, I'm talking to you today from Cairo, Egypt, um, just uh, at the northeast corner of Africa. Uh, my second home is only 30 minutes drive from the Great Pyramids, Cairo University, which I call a second home. And just by crossing the River Nile, I would reach my faculty of dentistry of Cairo University. We are quite a big and busy place with almost 4,000 undergrad student, 2,000 postgrad student. We receive around 1,000 patients a day, visiting our 11 departments, supervised by our 700 faculty member and divided among 10 floors on an area of almost 1,000 meters square. So you could safely say that we are quite a busy place. We just recently opened our state-of-art brand um, research 
These are the wonderful members of my department, the oral facial department at Cairo University. Grad students, we scan 30 CBCTs per day and around 220 periapical films. We are also members of EMRA, the Egyptian Maxillofacial Radiology Alliance, which I had the honor of founding in the year 2022. Our logo is inspired by Ra from the Egyptian mythology. It is depicted as a solar disk with long emanating arms ending with hands that reach out to the earth or the key of life, bringing nourishment and nurturing the planet earth. Well, Emra mission is to nurture and advance the scientific knowledge in the field of oral and maxillofacial radiology in Egypt. We aim to foster collaborative research with world reputed research institutions, and we act as a platform for oral and maxillofacial radiologists in Egypt as well as the MENA region, helping them to share their knowledge and collaborate in scientific research. And here is our solar disk again. You cannot miss it on the back of the throne of Tutankhamun, which I hope you can see at uh, the Egyptian Museum when you come to visit us. It uh, depicts one of the most intimate and beautiful um, scenes in the art of history with the young king and his wife um, um, placing ointments on his body with the solar disk shining above them. So back to science. Um, throughout the last decade, dental and maxillofacial imaging has revolu revolutionized the way we view our patients and plan their treatment. The concept of a virtual patient has become a reality, allowing us to offer them more precise patient-specific treatment plans with more predictable treatment outcomes. In an ideal world, we all hope that our image would be vivid with high resolution, optimum soft and hard tissue contrast with the least possible artifacts and the lowest radiation dose. 10 years ago, that was not possible. It was a far-fetched dream, but I think we are approaching this as we move on. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we had an intelligent AI assistant who would provide us with accurate, reliable, and reproducible analysis and diagnosis of our images as well. Well, let's remember that every 2D image we see is just a matrix of pixels with different grayscales. And every 3D image we see is again a cluster of voxels, each having their own spatial coordinates and gray value as well. Today's technology allows us to manipulate these pixels and voxels in a way that we did not know before. Either by changing, manipulating our image capturing technology, our image receptors, or the way we display and view our images. It is very safe to say that the landscape of oral and maxillofacial imaging is rapidly changing. And today I will be talking about three technologies that are changing the landscape for dentistry. Dental MRI, second generation CBCT, and artificial intelligence. So let's begin with dental MRI. And I think many of the audience received an email from Dent Supplies Serona in April of 2023, announcing the launch of a joint research project in magnetic resonant imaging for dentistry. And I think this the key word here was zero radiation or no radiation. And I think this event proved that dedicated dental MRI is certainly on the move. So when is MRI used for diagnosis in dental specialties? Can MRI be a radiation-free replacement for 2D and 3D imaging? And what is the potential of a dental dedicated MRI system? Let's begin with this systematic review um, published in the cutting edge of the DMFR journal in the year 2023. And their research question was, when is MRI used for diagnosis in dental specialty? And I think the most common 
indications would be TMD imaging of the disc, as well as salivary glands and soft tissues pathology. With its unique structure, the TMJ has a bony component and a soft tissue component, making the MRI the imaging method of choice for diagnosis of internal derangements. It allows us to see an anterior displacement of the articular meniscus in relation to the mandibular condyle, as well as reduction or no when the mouth is opened. And the restriction of the mouth opening is explained by the vivid MRI imaging. It also allows us to reveal a lymphoepithelial cyst, such as this one in the right parotid gland, with an iso-intense <clears throat> signal uh, similar to the muscle. Just by shifting to the T2-weighted images, we can reveal a lesion with a high internal signal because of its fluid content, making our diagnosis easier. There is always a balance, there is always a trade-off. MRI is a non-ionizing radiation that allows excellent differentiation of soft tissues, excellent soft tissue contrast. However, as dentists, we have limited accessibility to them. And of course, we suffer from the artifacts that deteriorate image quality, especially with dental restoration, orthodontic braces, which are a common occurrence in the so how can we spice specified sequences and equipment for dental imaging? We hope to reduce the acquisition time, reduce the artifacts, and of course, at all at a lower cost. Okay, so I think we stopped here, right? Okay, and I was just saying that uh, when viewing MRI image, it's a matter of change of perspective, as we can directly visualize cancellous bone in intraoral mucosa, dental pulp, while the cortical bone and dental uh, roots are indirectly visualized. So let's look, take a look at the application. And we start with radiation-free cephalometric analysis, which proved to be accurate even in 3D cephalometric analysis with excellent agreement to corresponding measurements on CBCT. And this makes the MRI as an excellent non-ionizing alternative to CBCT for treatment planning and monitoring orthodontics, especially when we are considering the young age of patients who are uh, most uh, often undergoing orthodontic treatments. What about implant planning? Can we see um, a radiation-free implant planning in the future? And in this paper, they did a prospective in vivo study of accuracy and reliability of dental MRI for radiation-free direct implant planning. And the results proved to be reliable in surgical guides, sufficiently accurate for implant placements. However, the authors advise on more study to increase its accuracy before it can be actually transferred to the clinical settings. We are hoping to increase the spatial resolution as well as decrease the acquisition time to avoid any motion artifacts. And looking at the images and comparing the MRI with the CBCT, we have here an implant plan and we can see the implant insertion that is planned in region 36. No bone augmentation was necessary in any of them, and both uh, images uh, show the same uh, impression. In addition, we can see a large combined periodontal endodontic lesion that can be seen again on both imaging modalities, CBCT and dental MRI. In this case, both imaging modalities indicate the need to do a sinus lift augmentation. And again, this is something that can be confirmed in the dental MRI as well as the CBCT images. In this case, we had a bit of a misleading dental MRI image where it shows sufficient bone without the need for bone augmentation. However, the CBCT image saw that there actually there was a need for bone augmentation and it is probably the preserved outer shape of the alveolar bone that was misleading in the case 
of the dental MRI. Here, dentists were able to correctly identify the extensive bone loss in the implant site in both the CBCT and the dental MRI examination. How about MRI for um, a third molar surgery? And we often want to see and visualize the lingual nerve, the mandibular nerve, to be able to uh, assess the risk of injury. And these MRI are offering us a wonderful view of the mandibular uh, third region, along with the lingual nerve showing here, indicating a hyper-intense signal intensity as it enters into the third molar region. In this axial slice, we can also see the lingual nerve again, and we can also see the other branch of uh, the lingual nerve that is usually termed as the gingival branch of the lingual nerve or um, collateral nerve twig. As for here, again, we can see <clears throat> the lingual nerve, again, hyper intense, as well as the inferior alveolar nerve showing right here, allowing us high spatial resolution images, excellent soft tissue contrast, which makes MRI a valuable alternative to cone beam computed tomography in future dental clinical routines in case of third molar surgeries. In endodontics, MRI images can reveal a horizontal fracture with loss of MR signal in a necrotic pulp, such as this tooth. It can show an apical tumor with calcified central aspect, as well as the surrounding osteolysis as seen on the sagittal, as well as the coronal images. Or an apical granuloma accompanied by hyperplasia of the basal sinus membrane. Again, very helpful in many cases in endodontics and showing us vital, uh, uh, vital diagnostic info that is actually not visible on CBCT. MRI can be used for caries detection as well. It allows delineation of a hyper-intense signal due to the porous nature and infiltration of liquid of caries lesion. So to sum up, research investigating MRI use for dentistry is not new. It has been for years. But what is new is the MRI system developed for dental imaging task, as well as dental MRI scanners. Several companies are anticipating smaller and lower Tesla units that can be used for dental purposes, as well as dental dedicated coils, such as the one with the company Norris, the Mandibula 15-channel dental coil, which shows a signal-to-noise ratio gain for teeth from 236 to 413% compared to the standard head and neck coil, resulting in superior image quality. This coil serves as a multi-element. It can receive a array and and act as a positioning system as well, allowing us 3D high resolution dental and maxillomandibular MRI images. So let's move on to another technology, the second generation CBCT sources. And just like the medical CT underwent a lot of uh, advances and uh, uh, generations, we expect the same to happen for the CBCT as well. And it's about time to, to start with a second generation with the goal to increase soft tissue contrast, decrease metal artifacts, provide us with accurate Hounsfield unit measurements at a less radiation dose with less noise, all of this at a low cost. And hopefully it can be retrofitted to our existing CBCT scanners. And actually, there is a lot of work and research in that area with multi-source CBCT configuration that allows a better image quality and a reduced dose. 
And in this paper, um, we see a six source configuration for a CBCT. And what they do is spectral separation, allowing us to uh, use different energy filters. As we all remember, X-rays are heterogeneous beams, and it's this inherent nature that is causing a lot of um, uh, uh, problems in our images. And so by using this filter, we are aiming for a virtual mono-energetic beam, allowing us improved image quality at a reduced dose. Another format is a dual energy CBCT system. And this uh, prototype is um, uh, taking place in the University of North Carolina with a um, very promising publication about the feasibility of this prototype, providing us with significantly reduced scatter and improved image quality with metal artifact reduction as well, and more accurate uh, Hans field values. As we speak, there is um, an undergoing work for the development of a carbon nanotube X-ray source for multi-source CBCT imaging. And again, it's a prototype, a very promising uh, prototype, and work is in progress to evaluate the whole imaging system and compare it to the current CBCT models with a single X-ray source. So we have um, something uh, certainly promising to look forward to. And now let's move on to the AI-assisted applications in dentistry. A recent publication for the bibliometric analysis of artificial intelligence in dentistry, focusing on the period from 2000 to 2023, showed uh, the occurrence of 651 publication, 88.7% were published after 2019, with 34.5% in China and the USA. I do believe that Turkey is amongst the highest uh, publishing um, uh, countries uh, with Ankara University as one of the leaders in this field. The authors describe the research on, on AI in dentistry with the term explosive growth. And I think we can all agree on this by viewing this graph. The study aimed to provide a comprehensive overview of global trends and research hotspots on the application of AI in dentistry. We are anticipating a future where medical devices and clinical decision support systems are in place, allowing us to provide our patient with precision dentistry. AI is about, um, machine learning is a subfield of AI. And it's a technique that enables computer systems to learn patterns from large data sets. It follows an algorithm to analyze and draw inferences from the data. It undergoes training to learn and adapt automatically from experience without being explicitly programmed. And the end result is a prediction. A simple example would be your next most probable favorite song on Spotify or the occurrence of a carous cavity or a loss of alveolar bone on a periapical X-ray. Deep learning is a subfield of machine learning that has the ability to learn complex data representation. It requires a larger amount of data and higher computing power. The underlying structure of deep learning is artificial neural networks, convolutional neural networks. And these are layers of simple processing units named neurons that are sequentially stacked one after another via weighted connections. The CNN learns the filters automatically without mentioning it explicitly. These filters help in extracting the right and relevant features from the input data. CNNs are specialized to deal with data with a grid-like topology, such as our X-rays, our 2D and 3D images. 
CNNs can capture the spatial features from an image. Spatial features refer to the arrangement of pixels and the relationship between them in an image. You know the way we look at an image and identify the object by identifying its shape, its edges? Well, a convolutional network does this by comparing the pixel's value, extracting the right features, and accordingly identifying an object or identifying a pathology. So what are the application domains of deep learning in dentistry? One is classification of complex pattern in 2D and 3D images, which is to answer the question, is there a certain pathology detectable on this image? Automated object detection of a landmark or lesion, in which image area is this certain pathology located? And then segmentation, which is essentially a classification task at the pixel levels which pixels of this image show this certain pathology. And then of course, we have image enhancement, image generation, which is obtaining high quality images from images acquired at a low dose. And finally, multimodal image registration. So let me make a quick review of some of the AI application using dental maxillofacial imaging data. And the question would be, can AI outperform the experienced dentist or the experienced radiologist. In dental caries, detecting curious lesion of different radiographic extension, recently caries detection using AI has focused on the detection of the early enamel caries, the one that we usually miss on x-ray. And in this paper, what is nice is that seven dentists were um, the golden standard, and they showed greatly different sensitivities with the initial caries lower than 25% and advanced caries 40 to 75%, while as the AI model showed robust sensitivity for both, exceeding 70%. So in this case, the CNN model outperformed seven experienced dentists in detecting initial enamel and advanced dentine caries. What about periodontal evaluation? AI models are helping us in detection of periodontal bone loss, classification of periodontitis stages, measurement and staging of periodontal bone loss, and identification of periodontally compromised teeth. And in this publication, the DenNet neural network was used for detection of periodontal bone loss using panoramic radiograph. And again, through the multi-step training framework, the proposed model was able to achieve a PBL detection performance superior to that of dental clinician. Endodontic evaluation. AI models are helping us in detection, classification, and measurement of apical pathologies, detection of the difficult vertical root fracture that are sometimes missed on X-ray, as well as detection and classification of um, C-shaped canal. Again, a task that can be challenging for the general practitioner. And in this paper, a deep learning model for detection of periapical idiolucent lesion um, uh, systematic review was done, and it showed the conclusion was a relatively high sensitivity and specificity for detection of periapical radiolucencies using deep learning in all image modalities that were surveyed in the systematic review and meta analysis. This shows the potential for independent use in clinical setting in the very near future. What else? Detection of vertical root fracture. And again, an artificial intelligence system was designed to detect vertical root fracture on panoramic radiograph. It, it showed promising diagnostic accuracy, but still the model had to overcome relatively low accuracy on non-endodontically treated teeth, potential impact of caries, fillings, dental restoration, and metal artifacts on their performance. So this is an area of 
where more research is needed, where these specific challenges have to be addressed with a bigger data set and bigger amount of data, as well as enhancement in the uh, designed model to bring out better results. Another example is predicting C-shaped canals in mandibular second molars on panoramic radiographs. And in this case, the performance has been shown similar or superior to both general dentists and specialists. So as you see, there are areas where uh, the accuracy of the designed models has superseded uh, dentists and other areas that need further research. What about dental implants? Peri-implant bone loss and implant fractures are one of the areas that are under study. And here is a pilot study of a deep learning approach to detect marginal bone loss around implants. And the model in this case performed similarly to two general dentists, but inferior to one specialist. As for maxillofacial pathology, Several researchers are trying to develop AI tools to improve the diagnostic accuracy of general practitioner for various maxillofacial pathology to reach the level of specialist. And in this study, a convolutional neural network was um, designed for the diagnosis of jaw tumors. The model achieved high diagnostic accuracy performance, sensitivity and specificity was over 80% on par with five oral maxillofacial surgeons. And here are two examples from this publication. A patient with multilocular cystic radiolucency at the right angle of the mandible, and the model here could correctly classify the ameloblastoma with a probability of 0.57, along with labeling the correct location. Another case of a multi of um, a unilocular cystic radiolucency in this corner of the mandible. And again, this AI model was able to classify a keratocystic odontogenic tumor with a probability of 0.73. This publication is for the automatic detection and segmentation of morphological changes of the maxillary sinus mucosa on CBCT, in which we want to be able to assess the volume roundness and surface area as well in both uh, sinuses. And the model showed high accuracy for both detection and segmenting mucus retention cysts, mucosal thickening in both ultra-dose, ultra-low dose, and standard-dose CBCT images. What about the TMJ? We now have models that can do automated cortical thickness measurements of the mandibular condylar head on CBCT using a deep learning method. An algorithm that showed 3D rendered colored map and is expected to contribute to the automated quantification of bone thickness changes in CBCT images. AI applications are now commercially available for reporting on dental status, tooth detection and numbering, detection, segmentation, and labeling of so many pathologies, teeth, crowns, fillings, root canal fillings, implants, periapical lesion, and periodontal bone loss. I'm sure many of us are already using some of these um, applications in our clinical settings. And as the research progresses, we expect more accurate and more reproducible results from this commercially available platform. Let's move on to AI applications for treatment planning. AI has a great potential to help the dental practitioner with treatment planning and the time-consuming task in the digital dental workflow. Automated segmentation and automated multimodal image registration are examples. And we now have AI models that can segment uh, almost all maxillofacial structure, mandible, teeth, inferior alveolar nerve, sinuses, and so on. It, and we also have research to segment teeth 
accurate enough for auto transplantation purposes. What about AI applications for treatment planning? So far, several AI applications have been proposed, uh, proposed for automated landmark localization, implant planning, assessment of the difficulty of planned third molar surgery, skeletal classification, facial symmetry assessment, as well as decision-making on tooth retention or extraction in orthodontic treatment. And I will show you a few examples automated landmark identification. In this network, we were able to generate an AI algorithm capable of analyzing new cephalometric X-ray comparable to the precision of an experienced human examiner. For implant planning, this is a very interesting study, a deep learning approach for dental implant planning in CBCT image. And this model called perform automatic detection of edentulous sites, nasal fossa, maxillary sinus, and mandibular canal, as well as measure the heights and width of residual alveolar bone at the edentulous site on CBCT images, turning the process of dental implant planning into an automated process. Let's take a closer look at the results. For the detection accuracy, it was high for a dentulous site, reaching 95.3%, and moderate for the mandibular canal, 72.2%, as well as the nasal fossa and maxillary sinus. The authors could um, report on the sites of the maxillary premolars, molars, and mandibular premolars. They showed automated bone height measurements were similar to the manual measurements, which is the ground truth, of course. As for the bone height measurements on the side of both maxillary mandibular anterior teeth, as well as mandibular molars, they were significantly different from the manual measurements, which made them realize that it could be possible that there is an incorrect localization of the measuring points, another area for their next research, I'm sure. Automated bone width measurement on all two sides was significantly different from the manual measurements. We can, sorry, we can thus We can thus conclude that using, or the authors concluded, that using these systems in implant planning will both facilitate the work, of course, the success of the present study in the detection of sinus, mandibular canal, and missing teeth reinforces this possibility. A need for more extensive studies is needed, and this is our role as a community of oral and maxillofacial radiologists. What about planned third molar surgery? Is there a CNN model that can determine whether lower third molars are truly in contact with or positioned buccally or lingually to the mandibular canal? Well, <clears throat> uh, these authors have designed an artificial intelligence model to perform this task. And the accuracy was 72% for determining the true contact position, 81% for classifying the buccolingual position, outperforming six oral maxillofacial specialists. So as you see, all over the world, there are more and more ideas for designing artificial intelligence model that facilitate our jobs as dentists that allow us to perform more important diagnostic tasks in an automated manner. Last but not least is the multimodal image registration a critical and time-consuming step in the digital dental workflow. And in this very interesting study, they were able to automate the registration between comb beam CT, scanned surface via a deep pose regression neural network. So this has been an interesting survey of recent publications and uh, different diagnostic tasks that are uh, being automated using AI models. So what does the way ahead um, tell us? What are the challenges or limitations that we should be aware of? 
I would say that the biggest limitation is generalization. We need to make sure that our training sets of data are generalized as much as possible. Uh, obtained from different uh, multicentric studies, obtained from different uh, imaging protocols, in order to make sure that our models are well trained to be able to render us with accurate results. I would highly recommend this recent publication by the IADR group or the ITO WHO Focus Group AI for Health, Artificial Intelligence in Dental Research. And the author came up with a checklist for author, reviewers, and readers in order to increase the robustness, reproducibility, and applicability of AI studies in dentistry. This is a consented uh, chest, uh, checklist by a huge group of researchers. I've had the pleasure to be one of them on planning, conducting, and reporting AI studies. And they were able to make a checklist of 31 items on planning, conducting, and reporting of AI studies, uh, studies, uh, wider goal, focus, design, and specific aims, how to uh, do the data sampling and reporting, how to estimate the sample size, as well as the reference test construction, the model parameters, how to design it and how to report about it as well in publication, as long, along with the training and evaluation process, how to uh, discuss uncertainty and explainability, and finally, the performance metrics and data partitions that should be included in the reporting of every study as well. Um, uh, in Egypt, we have recently launched EMRA Lab, and this is uh, the dedicated research hub of EMRA. It comprises 26 DMFR researchers, three data scientists, and one medical engineering consultant across nine different universities. And we're trying to follow this checklist in order to be able to increase the robustness of our AI models as well as explore a new diagnostic task. The fact that we come from so many different universities is also a plus in terms of generalization of our data. And these are, are our current research projects. And as we see, we, uh, we are collaborating with different universities in order to um, render better results and allow better training of our models. Uh, this is a quick overview of the current projects that we are working on, and we hope to be able to share with you some of our published um, studies in the very near future. So this uh, brings me to the end of my presentation. We hope uh, we are uh, there are uh, plans, uh, undergoing plans to be able to host a joint uh, dental and maxillofacial radiology conference for Egypt and Turkey for EMRA and the Turkish Society. We will be soon sharing more info about it, hopefully. And uh, I do invite you to join our mailing list and to uh, follow us on social media as well for all our recent news and occurrences. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, I hope this has been beneficial to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, it was very beneficial, a very interesting and presentation. Uh, I think it gave me much hope uh, about the future, although there are risks of losing our profession uh, <laughs> because of the artificial intelligence. But in any case, uh, world is always in progression, always uh, yeah, approaching uh, a better future, I hope, at least in uh, the field of uh, imaging. Uh, I would like to ask the audience if there are any questions. Okay, then I, again, would like to add something. Uh, among those um, very interesting um, new technologies. Uh, I would like uh, to say that uh, the dental MRI is my favorite 
because when I was a PhD student, it was like, um, you know, um, both a hope and a joke <laughs> that one day the Japanese, you know, they produced the smallest things. So uh, it was hope and joke of uh, the Japanese will uh, one day will uh, manufacture tiny MRIs for dental yes. use. Yes. Uh, it was <laughs> at the end, uh, in the uh, previous century, 1990s. But now I see that uh, that joke will uh, become a serious reality. Uh, I still keep my hope to see it. Very true. I think that um, uh, just years ago, I mean, I'm a one who witnessed a Scanora machine when tomography mm -hmm. was uh, was the biggest thing then. And now we have uh, 3D rendering, we have uh, 3D simulations, uh, we have uh, uh, virtual patients. So yes, uh, dreams do come true and uh, science and technology is always progressing forward. And um, I hope uh, that we can positively uh, contribute to that. And I also thank you again for sharing uh, all those with us. Thank, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Oh, Have a question. oh okay. Um, I would like to read it. Okay. Uh, thank you for your wonderful presentation. Is there any study about usage of um, artificial intelligence in dental MRI applications? Well, yeah, yes, I, I, I just came across a study that uh, actually um, uh, they were using an AI model to um, uh, sort of uh, 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 construct a virtual or a synthetic CBCT image from MRI image. So that was like, uh, to me, that was the biggest interplay of all the technologies that I uh, have just mentioned in my lecture. Um, I can share it uh, with you, doctor, and maybe you can uh, send it to uh, to them. Uh, honestly, I did not have time to add it to my lecture, but here it is. Here is the question, and I'm glad I was able to highlight this as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yes. Uh, AI is certainly uh, coming to the uh, MRI arena as well. well. I'm not happy to end this presentation, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's time for everyone to have uh, uh, some family time and a pleasant evening. Yes, thank you. Yes. Thank evening. you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, and hopefully see you soon in Egypt. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.